much of a statement. Um, uh, yay. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, they, I, I thought they were awesome um, in terms of just anticipating the ball. There were some plays in the first four points. I knew that it was going to be a bad night for Dayton because in the first four points, there were all four of those balls could have landed and not one of them landed. Um, and it was just unbelievable anticipation and just absolute being ready. And uh, so, real happy for them and, and real proud of them because that was, that was just to, all I asked them to do is play hard and they played hard. Go fam them. <laughs> yeah, if you have a question, please raise your hand. I was just going to ask, uh, the Pac-12 has I mean, head and shoulders above the rest of the conferences around the country, I would say. But is the back-to-back -back nature of playing two tough opponents each weekend help you in a situation like this where you're into a tournament? Whoever. Yeah, I'll ask, start with Cheddar for you guys. Oh, for with me? I'll start with you. I, I don't know. Um, you know, it's the, the players probably the one that have to answer it. I, I, I think yes and no, um, and this year we did it less because of the Pac-12 network, which I'll take. Um, so, you know, we had, there were some days in between and things like that. So we did have back-to-back -back nights, um, which prepared you a little bit. I actually like that we didn't have every <coughs> single night back-to-back -back this year, so I think that was good. But they're a better judge of that. Than I that. would agree with that, and the fact that, you know, you do have that competition back-to-back, -back, and so you know you can do it in back-to-back -back nights, but at the same time this year, we weren't always back-to-back, -back, and so that definitely helps with the wear and tear on your body, just getting that extra day of rest. But I think having, knowing that we can go at our highest level back-to-back -back nights really helps us. Coach, you talked about, yesterday you talked about how you thought you relied so much on the land yesterday. Um, how did you feel about Burner's production today and the rest of the team? How did they have? Yeah, Liz was on right from the beginning. I knew that. Um, we're talking about she getting the ball outside of her body a little bit last night when she was hitting. And first couple of swings, I went, uh-oh. Um, because when Liz gets it right directly over her right shoulder, that's when she can bring it. And no one likes playing defense when she can do that. Um, so I, I, you know, I thought I knew right away she was going to have a good night. She was going straight up, and, and uh, you know, Kat did a great job. Ari, game three was awesome. Kanace. Holy cow. Um, I'm thrilled with Kanace. And so, you know, I think Elena took a few too many swings again tonight. Um, part of it was that we were trying to go right after the setter. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it wasn't as successful as we kind of hoped. But uh, that's probably why she took a few too many swings, at least in the beginning. Hey, Coach, you mentioned Kanace. Did you know what she had with her early on in the season? I know she was playing a lot of time for you. Early on, but you know that she could come on strong like this in an NCAA tournament environment. It's, it's six thirty six, but five total blocks, and that's pretty good performance for freshman. I just thought it would be here a lot earlier. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, the kid is unbelievably physically gifted, um, and she's going to be a great player. Don't get me wrong. It's just, it's not, it's just, it's taking a little while. But I'll take it right now. This is a good time to have it show up. <laughs> Yeah, Jim, your, just your thoughts on advancing to the Sweet 16 and, and what it means to host an NC2A event. Hosting was awesome. Um, you know, this is a um, this is a really cool place to go to school. Um, I think it's a neat place. It's a wonderful place to live. Uh, and these fans have been awesome to us. And, uh, you know, we, we can never give back what they have given to us. Uh, and so the, the hosting part is great. Um, as for going to the Sweet 16, we get to keep playing. Play, you know, one more play. Um, and that's it. it. It doesn't mean a thing other than we get to keep playing, and we like it. How about for the players? I mean, being always great, winning that much better for you guys, if anybody? Uh, yeah, I think being home was really fun. It's always great when we can get a packed crowd out there and have a lot of energy and everything. And I think it was really fun for the city of Eugene to like host something like this. And it got people excited, excited about volleyball. And hopefully it'll stay exciting. So. You guys are on a 15 set winning streak now, going back to the opening set at Washington State. You guys feel like you're playing the best volleyball right now of your season, or just good enough at this point to, to keep on rolling? 
I didn't even know that. I didn't know that. Either. I'm glad we didn't know that. I, one play at a time. I know that sounds like somebody else you know, but you know that, that's that's what we, um, you know, if, as long as we stay in that mode where we're not and nothing, there's nothing behind us and there's nothing in front of us. It's just what right right in front of our face. Um, we're a lot better, and I think that's great. I had no idea. Again, with the home crowd, is there was there any fear on your part, Jim, that you know they might be a little bit too in? Uh, you know, more last night than maybe tonight. Did you have that concern that it might be difficult to keep emotions under check? I, a lot. I I believe that the first time you host an NCAA event, it's the most difficult matches there is to win. Um, obviously, I never told them that. Um, it's hard because the, I mean you you're supposed to win. You're at home. If you lose, you're like, are you crazy? Um, and they did a great job of that, and uh, just fabulous job of keeping their emotions in check and doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, for any of the players, the second and third um, sets, it was really close, like 22-20 or something like that, on both of those. Do you remember what the difference was maybe in those last few points where you were able to pull it out? Maybe they, they was there some, something I think it was serving. I think we served them out of system pretty well, so we knew exactly where it was going. And then um, Ari and Kanace had some awesome blocks there at the end that really helped finish out the game. So, I mean, it's always great when, you know, someone like Kelly or Kat or anyone on the team with a great serve gets, can get them out of system so we can funnel all to, like, one hitter. As a team, you guys outblock the Flyers 10 to 5 tonight. So how important is that moving forward to have the Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they cheated us on one again. Yeah, well, um, I, yeah we did. I, I think it's great. You know, people aren't going to, they're going to get this tape because they have to and um, go, wow, they can block. We're happy about that. And Jim, you alluded to the first set, the balls, you know, going your way, and I believe there was one play where Elena actually turned her back, and the ball off went off of her back, and, and you got a point on it. I'm, I'm wondering yeah. if the player, did you kind of know it's going to be your night when some things like that happen? See, that's where I would say, I don't think it, I don't, that wasn't luck. I mean, it hit Elena, and that, sorry Elena, that was a bad play by Elena, but it was an unbelievable by the two people that were after her, that expected that ball coming up. And, you know, she kind of turned, and, I mean, it, it, she turned and it hit her. And first of all, this game makes you look silly. It's just the way it is because the ball travels so fast. You, there's, you can't go through this without a week without looking silly because you have that practice doing this. But so she, it just turned and it hit her. But what was great about it, it wasn't going, that was sort of my <coughs> point. That ball is easily on the floor. And it wasn't on the floor. That's what was amazing to me, is that they got that ball. And it wasn't because it went right to them. They had to go play that ball. That, that's when I knew we were going to be really hard to beat. I think we played really hard today. And when we play hard, then it makes it a lot of fun. And we can get a lot of balls up that we usually don't. And everything just meshes and goes well for us. And they did have a lucky shoulder hit too when Ari jumped in like perfectly. So it happens on both sides. So what do you do to keep it up? One play at a time. Practice on Monday morning. Yeah. Practice Monday. I was like, morning. go hard and practice. Um, I know before the match, Jim was telling us if we just play the same way we have this week in practice, like we're going to be happy with the outcome. And so as long as we keep practicing really hard, and that goes to everyone on our team. Uh, the people that you don't see out there are definitely pushing us every single day to make sure that we're ready. We're just pretty much brainwashed, so we're <laughs> <Ready> to go. <laughs> What's in the post-game smoothies now? Secret. <laughs> <laughs> Strawberries. Strawberries. <laughs>